Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, <clears throat> I have a very good book here. And uh, the book is damaged because this was like way, way back. It got wet and it got so damp. And when, I, when it got really damaged, I had to like dry it up with a, with a whole bunch of paper towel and then let it set to dry. So it kind of kind of looks uh, really wrinkled, the book. But anyway, it's still in good condition. I ordered it again because um, I decided that, well, you know, this book is getting bad every every time. It's getting worn out, so I'm going to have to order it again. So anyway, um, this book is really good. It's uh, Warriors Draw and Paint Fantasy Art Warriors and Heroes. And it's also by that company that I mentioned before, uh, my other books, Impact. And it's by Alan... Lothwell, and I think he did stuff for um, comics, I'm not too sure, it could be Image or Dark Horse Comics, and he did all this other, but mainly he does a lot of like fantasy art, and that's what I like, I like fantasy art. So anyway, let's get going because sooner or later, like always, I gotta go to work. I have like probably a half an hour or like, yeah, a half an hour I have, so I'm just gonna show you this book, little by little, page after page. And uh, if there's a lot of glare, I'll probably fold, probably move the book a little bit so you can see. All right, so the beginning pages, you can see the introduction. There's a great, awesome drawing of a barbarian Viking. And uh, I'm, I'm the type of guy that I actually, if you want, you can check out my playlist. I have a, like a whole bunch of playlist about, you know, stories and history about the Vikings, barbarians. And I actually know all their names. Celts, Saxons, Picts, Goths, Franks, Anglo-Saxons, and uh, Visigoths, Ostrogoths. Well, you know, you name it. I'm into all that stuff. And uh, especially the, the Middle Ages. And uh, that's what I like about this book. Because it shows you pretty much the armory and very Viking type. Love this stuff. It tells you all the brushes that you need to, all the materials that you need. You know, brushes, sable brush. And uh, the book is probably a little bit stick together because it's like when it got wet, it got, you know, it got damaged. So bear with me. Well, here's like always, like in every book, it shows you blocks, cylinders, you know. Um, there's a good sense of perspective using um, fears, circle, circle, circles, especially with this arm. You can see it's giving you a good, what I like about this page is that it has a great, great perspective here and foreshortening the hands really coming at you at the camera and stuff. So it's great detailing here. So it's giving you an idea with the circles and the hand, the forehand. And then, uh, like always, everything has to do with um, gestures, you know, uh, drawing the figure gestures. And uh, let me bring this a little bit closer so you can see. Um, pretty much what I've been, <clears throat> you know, showing you guys and demonstrating to you guys that everything is done by gestures. Here we have the process in doing the head step by step. Um, the finished process of the head. And same thing with the profile. You start with a box, then you shape in the head. Here we have, you know, feet, hands. This is very good, good techniques in how to draw hands. Look at that, great technique. And then we got here muscular parts, biceps. It'll tell you pretty much in small, you know, words here. Drawing the figure again, the front torso, the back torso. And this is my favorite part, the, the weaponry. The weapons from the Middle Ages, the Viking times. And the, the technique to draw all this, which it actually shows you, I think, in the next page. Here we go. You start out pretty much like I've been showing you guys in a couple of videos that I've done before. You start out with a gesture line. You see number one. Number two, you do the outline of the weapon, whether it's a sword or an axe. Number three, you do the, um, the whole, you know, the details. And number four, you do all the coloring and all the details. Probably, that was probably made in a computer or something. And the same thing with the, the sword. You can tell that it starts out with a straight line. 
Number two, and the outline, the shape of the sword, the detailing, and then the finished process. You can tell that there's a lot of uh, toning on this, black tones from the light reflection. So it's really cool. I like the way this page um, was done, especially making weapons and stuff. So here we have color, the, uh, the theory of color, like different types of colors that you can use. And uh, it's got a lot of great um, drawings, you know, like very, very good art. Lighting is very important. And we have four pictures here of different lighting. So it's, that's very, very important. And here we go, the barbarian. How to draw the barbarian. Again, a gesture. You study it, everything has to do with the gesture, and you do the, pel you know, it's already, the pelvic It's already done, all you gotta do is like the cubes. And this is what I was uh, explaining on drawing the Marvel way, when you do the cubes. You do the cubes, not necessarily looking like cubes, but you taper in making the shape of the leg. It's like you're doing the shape of the body with cubes. That's pretty much, this will probably tell you over here. And I gotta read this book again. The problem is that it's so damaged, you know, that I'm gonna have to wait till I get the the second one that I ordered. Which it's the same book, but I just had to order it again. So you can see the the, the muscle details after the the gesture, after the cylinders. You can see the cylinders inside, and you can see the outline of the figure. And then you start erasing all that stuff. Then you add more details. And uh, after that, you do the inking, the inking process, whether you're doing it on probably charcoal, or color, anything like that. And I'm going to start doing, um, the only problem is that, you know, my, um, I don't have enough storage to do, like, I'm probably going to have to do part one, part two, part three, of uh, doing it in pencil, doing it in ink, and then maybe adding some, you know, like uh, pencil coloring or something like that. I'm going to do what a lot of different things. Uh, it's just, um, it depends on the time that I have. If I have enough time, I can do a lot of videos. But for now, I'm gonna have to hold off on the inking and the color. This is great, great artwork, the details. This is uh, Bar Bordica. These are characters that the artist made. And you can see it's made by gestures again, cylinders. It's like if you if you observe it, it's kind of like cone shapes, cone shaped cylinders. That's what that this is. That's me. I actually did that. But I I promised myself that if I when I get the next book, the same book again, I am not going to draw on it like I did with this book. Great, great detailing, very, very perfection. And I love stuff like this. I love, love fantasy stuff. I love uh, Frank Vazetta, his work. I remember I used to collect, uh, you know, those cards. They used to sell them a lot in the stores. I don't know if they still do, but they used to have like, you know, the, those little cards, kind of like baseball cards, but with gum inside. And I used to collect a whole bunch of Frazetta artwork including Star Wars, all that stuff. Oh my God, I was like really crazy about all that stuff. And I would collect all those cards. I remember I had a good friend that used to live near me. We would actually show off with our cards. If it's not baseball cards, it's movie cards. That's an awesome drawing right there. The finished process is really great. Here's, um, I think this is like an elf, an elf warrior. And uh, you can see the ears right here. It's like an elf. And uh, this is a great pose. I'm telling you, this is great gesture and great pose of him, you know, holding the, uh, the arrow, the bow and arrow. And uh, you can see it's cone shapes. And uh, it's pretty easy to do. All you gotta do is, remember I, I told you about basically the figure is the gesture and three parts. One, two, three, which is the head, the torso, and the pelvic. But always start with the torso first, 
and the pelvic. After you do the gesture line, start with the pel the heart, sorry, the torso, the torso, the pelvic, then you add the limbs and then leave the head for last. It's better that way, trust me, it works out like that. And then after the uh, cone shapes, he adds the silhouette, which is the contour of the body, the, out, the outline of the body. Remember, the uh, contour means the outline of the body. You're, draw you're drawing the outline of the body. That's what it means. And what I like about this, that it tells you like all the details of the muscles on some of the pages, not all, the, not every single uh, uh, method that you see here. So it's a shame that, you know, this, it got wet. It was, um, what happened was that since I'm always, I, I always go to work on my bike sometimes. And uh, here in Miami, it's always raining like hell. And um, that day, I did not have my books. I had two books. Two books got damaged. I had two books, but I didn't put a, like a plastic garbage bag over it, you know, because I, that's what I usually do. Um, I put like a, like a garbage bag. You know, but that day it didn't have a garbage bag. So that day it was tense, a lot of rain, very, very, like very, it was like really deep, uh, a lot of rain. It didn't stop. And then my book completely got damaged. Like all this got wet and all this got wet. And then I had to, like I said, I had to like dry it. It took me like an hour to dry all the pages with paper. I had to turn the pages little by little and dry it. And then set it like for like a whole day to dry and it still looks kind of like wrinkle the book. Great, great detailing, great pose. I love that. It's like a samurai. That's what it is, a samurai. Great, great artwork. This is also a great gesture over here. You can see a great action. And this is what I mean. You know, you're actually bringing your character to life, you know, you, even though it, it doesn't look um, uh, done yet, but the gesture, it tells you this is going to be an awesome drawing. And then after that, once you add the details, once you add the details, you start perfecting it better, adding more details, adding the axe. And here's the finished process right here. Great illustration. And then you have the a close-up of it, of the face. This is also a good pose right here. You can see. You see the gesture is sort of like cone shapes. There's a uh, torso, pelvic shape, sort of like an underwear. And then at the same time, you got cones. And then you got the sword that's coming at you, kind of like foreshortening. You can see the foreshortening over here. It's great, great artwork. This guy's a real professional. And then let me see if I can, um, after I show you this book, I'll show you some tips how to draw the figures since I'm always doing. First, I want to show you the book, and then we'll we'll get to some illustrations. It's a very good book. I actually recommend it.
I actually found it on Amazon and also on eBay when I ordered it again like a week ago. Actually, no, like three, three days, four days ago. I had a very good friend that ordered it for me. So I'm dying to get the book again. Even though this looks fair, it's just the pages are a little bit damaged. But I'm just dying to get this book because it's, it's actually worth it. And I found it pretty cheap. Uh, you can find this uh, used and probably in good condition um, for seven bucks, uh, eight bucks. Because I try to get used books. I don't get, and I try to make sure that's in good condition. So far, I've ordered like three, four books, and the price was either really cheap, like four or five bucks. So you can find a lot of how to draw books very cheap on eBay. All right, so it's a lot of artwork. You can tell it's a lot of stuff. And uh, it's just the pages are very hard to turn because they're kind of like stick together because I haven't, well, it, when it got damaged for some reason, something, it got sticked. This is a great pose right here. So the pages are not going to turn very easily. All right, so let's let's get with the drawing now I'm, because I'm dying to show you guys how this is done. All right, for instance, this is a, a gesture, a regular pose. So I would do something like this. Um, first, let me see if the, fo the phone is focused. Yes, it's focused, good. Okay, I would probably start out um, with the gesture line. Then here's a torso. And then I will do the pelvic, but I'm not gonna do exactly like you, you see here. I'm gonna do it the way I would probably do a pelvic, like that. And then I'll do some lines. At the same time that I'm doing some lines, I'm doing cone shapes. Lines again, gesture lines. Then I shape it like cone shapes. Pretty much like, like what you see over here. So he's holding some type of sword. I'm also gonna show you how to do the, the swords. All right, instead of doing all these more cubes here, what I'm gonna do is, I already know the shape of the figure, so I'm just gonna, you know, skip one step and start doing the, um, the contour. See? It's like, for example, here's the, the pelvic. We're doing the pelvic. That. And the cone shapes. And all you gotta do is skip one step and just start doing the, uh, the outline of the form of the pelvic area, the, the, the hip area, and the legs. And then you start adding muscle details. The crotch area, make a bulge, kind of like a bulge a little bit. If it would have been a woman, then a woman would be more like the hips are a little bit. Let me see something here of a woman, because usually it's the same. Um, the pelvic actually looks the same in a woman, like over here. You see, it's almost the same as a man's pelvic. The only difference is that the waist, you can tell that the waist is inward more. It's more like a slender waist. And then he added, you can tell, I don't know if you can tell right here, he added the, you know, more um, 
form on the waist. So let's do the woman. So let's do it the way the book actually uh, shows you. Let me see, we'll do it right here. We'll do the woman. So it's sort of like a man's pelvic, but don't, um, don't worry about this because all you got to do is, is do the waist like that and then add more shape to the woman like this. See, that's all you got to do. And of course the crotch area, there's no bulge. It's just a small little crotch from the woman's from the hip area all the way to the legs see and usually women don't have too many muscles like the men do they just have just a little bit of a slight muscle like here that's about it you know and then we got the torso up here so pretty much that would be woman now if you want to you know do it this way like this You can extend it out, the hips, more. And then that would actually help you form the whole shape of the woman. Way smaller. And then the torso on the top. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do swords. And let's go back to the book again. How to do the swords, which is really cool. I like that that um, method, how to do the swords. I just got to find it. Here it is. You see how it starts out with a gesture line and you do the form. So I'm going to do my own sword and then maybe I'll do my own, my own axe. So let me get another clean page. Okay. So I'm going to do my make sure that the camera's getting this. All right, so I'm gonna do my own sword. I'm gonna do a line, straight line. Then what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna be the end of the sword and the top of the sword. So I'm gonna kind of like outline some type of shape. As I go along, I'm doing designs on it. Like if I want, I can do like, uh, you know, cylinders or something, but I'm not gonna bother with that. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do like maybe some cylinders or maybe block shapes to make a, an interesting sword. And you can do a, actually a lightsaber like this too, using this method. And then I'm gonna do another design like that. Actually, let me make this more bigger. Hold on. Because I don't know if you guys could see that. Let's make it in ink also. Oh, we can drop to the floor. All right. Clumsy me. I dropped everything to the floor. All right. Okay. It's all back in the bag. All right. All right. Now. We're going to do this bigger, okay? We're going to make a big, big sword. At the end here, and it's going to be the tip of the sword. And then, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start lining this. I'm going to use my ruler. Um, if I still have it here, let me see. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to use my ruler because that's going to help me Form it more better. This is going to be the tip right here and the tip of the, the sword. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start shaping it, kind of like a, the outline. Make some designs on it as I go along. Then make another line for the top of the, the, um, 
when you're holding the sword, like over here, let me show you over here, this part right here, this part right here. And make a, a another design here or something. You know, make it interesting. And then we're going to make maybe sort of like a half shape moon, something like that. Now I'm going to start the sword coming out from right here. I'm gonna actually use my ruler because I don't want to make it look too crooked. So I want to make a good, good sword here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the line all the way up, straight up. And then from here to from the tip, I do like a V shape, see? Then I erase this. I can't erase this top over because I did already in ink. So I got the sword done. And then I'm gonna make it a little bit more uh, visible. And there we go. And then we'll add some details. Add some more design on it. Some more details. There you go, guys. That's how you would probably do a sword. And then if you want to do an ax, like that, like that. And then you start giving it shape. Like that. Maybe I kind of messed up down here. Just I'm just gonna make it more uh, thinner. Yeah, I think it'll be better thinner. And that would be something like an ax. But the most important thing, just like when you're doing the figure, everything has to do with gesture. The center point, the center line for whether it's a figure, a sword, anything. So let's do another, uh, let's do a knife. And this is going to be the cross, this part over here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start doing a knife. I'm going to make sort of like a, a curve outlook outline. So that's a knife right there. We'll do the center line in ink so you can see what I'm trying to demonstrate here. So that's how you do a sword. The line technique is always important. You can do a cross also with the line. You can do, for example, the German cross, the World War II German cross. You can do kind of like measure it like a box And then you start forming it like this, like that. And that is the German cross, the regular German World War II or World War I, because this actually existed, oh, like probably in World War I. So. And then you can do like a cool design on it, a circle in the middle, another design here, kind of like a star kind of, because I've seen so many type of uh, 
crosses like this. I seen, you know, in Spain, they have crosses like this. They have in England, they have crosses like this. And it's all, it all has to do with religions and cults and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, you can do design across just by using lines. You start off with a cross line. The cross line is very important for a lot of things, including when you're doing the face also. And then you do the block shape, and then right there you start bringing it out like that bringing it out like that, bringing it out like that, bringing it out like that, like that, like that. And if you want, you can get really creative. You can do something cool like this. And you could actually make this into a weapon if you want. You can make it into a weapon. You could actually make a long handle, kind of like a very Viking kind of, you know. And this will be kind of like a a, a German cross um, weaponry or something. Or it could be a, like maybe a design for a a fantasy character that you created. You could act, you could actually bring in like that. You could actually bring in the design more into the center if you want, like this, if you want. You could, I mean, there's so many things, there's so, so many things that you can do with a cross and using shapes. And then you can, you know, the handle, you can make it like kind of like barbed wire on it or just, you know, ropes. So that way the Vikings have a good grip on the, uh, you know what's really cool, guys, uh, from the, the Walking Dead? Uh, Deacon, I think it was named as Regan. Re oh, yeah, Regan. <coughs> I love the bat. Oh, my God. The bat. Let me see if I can draw the bat. The bat, of course, yeah, you start out with a center line. And then you start doing the bat. Start. And I just love that, you know, I, I love that show. I actually got the box set. It's awesome. Um, and uh, Negan was a cool character, even though he was an evil character. But, but yeah, he turned good in the movie. So this is like a bat. In Spanish, un bate, you know. In Spanish, this is uh, una arma. Arma. Espala, sorry, sorry. Espala, that's how they say it in Spanish. And I think in Italy they say spale. So anyway, then this is like a regular cool bat, right? And then you got all these wires all over. <laughs> it's like really, really cool. You know, you have all these wires. You know, like barbed wire on the bat which that's really cool and creative. I don't know whoever thought of that idea, but actually, it, you know, the, the Walking Dead was a comic book, so so um, I'm pretty sure that in The Walking Dead, in the comic book, they had a bat. The character Negan was uh, holding a bat with a barbed wire. So, yeah, that was really cool in, in the show. So, okay, guys, and that's about it, man. Um, thank you for watching my video, and uh, I'm going to see if I can do more videos. But uh, what I really, really want to do with you guys now is um, I'm going to, you know, probably if I have a chance, I want to do face and heads, but comic book style. Because I haven't done um, that, I guess, in a long time. And uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, different ways that you can do it comic book style, you know, by uh, George Perez, um, Jim Lee, and uh, another good artist, uh, Ryan Benjamin, and John Buscema, and uh, I'm not going to actually use, uh, like, uh, maybe I'll do a little bit of Loomis or something, because really there's, there are some comic book artists that actually use the Loomis technique, and that is the basic way of, of drawing the head. 
But there are other ways that I've actually observed that's really cool by all these other artists. All right, guys, good luck and um, stay tuned for the other videos later on.